Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And I just got a phone call. So I was originally supposed to be talking about these nipple clamps and um, all of these uh, nipple stimulation. That was the original, that was supposed to be my original topic today. But I just got a phone call. And I say, you know what? Let me switch this up a little bit because I think most of the people that's on my page, we ain't sweet 16 no more. Most of y'all like me, meaning we consider to be middle age. And when you middle age, it seems like we're supposed to possess a certain type of wisdom. And when we possess a certain type of wisdom, that wisdom is supposed to be about our anatomy. It's supposed to be about life. It's supposed to be about the way things go, the way our bodies change, the way, you know, you're going to start to see the men starting to lose the little hair on their head and it's starting to thin out or whatever in the center. Um, you're going to start to see all different types of stuff that go on. You're going to be able to see some of them got extended performance time. Some of them performance time start to slack up a little bit. In other words, when people start changing, their body start changing. Um, you just start seeing all type of different things go on, okay? So what I want to let you know that there is nothing embarrassing about getting older, okay? Another thing that you're going to see when you're getting older is, y'all know when we start, you know, and, and I'm, I'm talking to middle-aged people because I know a lot of y'all middle-aged in your age, but, but in your mentality, you still 17, 18 years old, meaning that, you know, you, you still ain't let it go that you ain't in high school no more. And, and I get it. I get it. We we all different, right? I, I get that. Because I have conversations with people all day long, and I just be trying to figure out how you somebody grandmother. Lord, how you somebody mama? How you somebody? How you somebody? How, who gave you a damn dog to take care of? You know, we, we really meet people like that, okay? But if you know that you starting to grow some gray hair on top of your head, and you meet a man and he got salt and pepper hair, salt and pepper goatee, salt, he, he salt and pepper. What make you think the hell on his, his down below ain't salt and pepper too? What make you think, even if he's shaving and it's starting to grow back a little bit, what you think it's going to grow back black? You don't think it's going to grow back salt and pepper? Like, in other words, the same way the hair on his head change your colors, the hair below change your colors too. And you can't make a man feel bad because they got salt and pepper down there. Because guess what? As women, we got salt and pepper down there too. If I let that shit grow back, it's going to be salt and pepper. I might have blonde because I dyed blonde. But guess what? A couple of gray strings are starting to grow here and there and the other. That's called getting older. And it ain't nothing embarrassing about getting older. The phone call that I just got to me say, Lord, he was using the cock ring. The woman made him feel so bad about using the cock ring because she didn't know what it was. What is that? Why you got to wear that? What is, and I told him, I said, that was your opportunity to educate her because obviously she don't understand about the penis. She don't understand about blood flow. She don't understand about circulation. So obviously this was the opportunity to educate her. Okay. There's nothing embarrassing about wearing a cock ring. If you don't know what a cock ring is, this is a cock ring. This is it. And, I, and I'm showing you this because it's my job to teach. This is it. Now, yes, it looks small, but guess what? It stretches. It stretches. And if, if somebody tell you, oh, that, that little thing, that's too little for me. That, that little thing too little for me. No, it's not. Because guess what? If, if you bigger than this here, then you, if you're bigger than this, then you need to keep that dick to yourself. You, you don't need to give it to nobody. Because don't nobody want no horse inside of them. Okay? But the purpose of this is to slow up the blood flow. When the blood gets into the shaft, right? And it fills up the shaft. And he gets an erection. And it's a hard, firm erection. What he wants to do is put a little lube on. Roll his cock ring all the way to the base of the shaft. And what it's going to do is help him keep his erection. So when you see your man wearing a cock ring, then that should let you know that you in for a good night that night. That means that he ain't about to come quick on you. That means that he going to last a little longer. So ain't nothing embarrassing about wearing a cock ring. Now, this one is blue, 
but I got a whole bunch of black ones on the sales float. If the color throws you off, they come in blue, red, black, green. They come in all different kind of colors, okay? So find out your woman's favorite color and get the cock ring. Or if you just want to be on the stage, so just get a black cock ring, okay? It works better if you've shaven, if you, if you trim down because you don't want that hair getting caught up in this cock ring because then that's going to be painful, all right? Another thing that you will see when people get older, you'll see them starting to take enhancements. This here, this a rhino, this a 10 day enhancement, meaning that you take it, it get in your system, it stays in your system for 10 days. And when it's time for you to perform, you are ready to perform. There's nothing embarrassing about saying I had to go and get me a pill. It ain't nothing embarrassing. What's embarrassing is when you don't take the pill and you can't perform at all. What's embarrassing is when you in denial and you presenting limp dick. That is what's embarrassing. And you don't want to do nothing about it. That is what is embarrassing. Ain't nothing embarrassing about helping yourself, okay? Now, I done got the men out the way. Oh, we got the creams too. So if you don't want to do cock rings, you don't want to take a pill, we do have the creams. Moving on to the women, ain't nothing embarrassing about having lubricant in your nightstand. There's nothing embarrassing about having to use lubricant. I am 41 years old. Guess what? You ain't touching me without lubricant. You're going to have this on you. When you slide in, you're going to slide in with some lubricant on. Because what I know about me is I ain't sweet 16 no more. And yeah, this, this baby is good. But guess what? You ain't about to tear it up. When it start off, y'all know we start off, we be super sloppy wet. And then all of a sudden, throughout the duration of the time, you notice that you ain't as wet as you was in the beginning. Yeah. So you have to use lubricant. So you got your lubricant. This is the one that I like, the Wet Elite. But for those of you all who suffer from all type of sex anxiety and you tense up and you don't open up, then get you the one with the hemp in it, with the CBD in it, get this one. And for those of y'all who super sensitive and everything that you touch aggravates you, get the organic one, okay? Lastly, most times when you meet women in their middle age, or most of us that are middle age, everybody ain't had C-section births. I so happen to have both. I've had vaginal births and my last birth was a cesarean. Some of you meeting women and you know that they got children. You know that they didn't have vaginal births. So that means you know something that came through it. Yeah. And not only did she have children, but you know that you, you know when you met her, she wasn't no virgin. Yeah. So that means that they had some, they had some other the dicks that came before you. Okay. So if you see her tightening up her vaginal walls because she want to make that thing snug for you then guess what? Ain't nothing embarrassing about that. It ain't that she wore out. It ain't, it's called life. It's called life. So I need y'all to get a hold of yourselves. Y'all don't call me because I'ma let you know, ain't nothing that I, everything that, the most stuff that we sell here has, it has to do with sexual enhance, enhancers. Meaning um, using some type of vaginal, uh, vaginal tightener, lubricant, uh, pills, stuff like that. That's what we sell the most of up in here. Okay? So, now that I got that out the way, let me get into what I was supposed to be talking about today. <laughs> Alright. So, y'all, we just got some beautiful, beautiful nipple clamps in. Okay? So, if you like me and your breast or your hot spot, meaning that if you, if I'm up there riding dick and you start sucking on these titties, I'm about to wet you all the way up. I'm, I'm about to come all over you. We both about to be, we about to be soaking wet because my breast or that, that is my spot. That is my spot more than my ears. That is my spot more than my neck. You touch these titties, it is over with. So if you like me, then you may opt to do nipple clamps. Now let me show you something about the nipple clamps. There's these little black things on the nipple clamps. Those are called buffers, okay? They are designed to pinch the nipple, but it's not pinching the nipple harshly. You ever have somebody take your nipple and they just kind of squeeze it and twist it a little bit? That's exactly what the buffer does. And then if you look on the buffer, there's an adjuster on it so that you can tighten it up or loosen it up to your liking. Yes. Now you say, what is so special about these nipple clamps? They have weights on them. Why do we want nipple clamps with weights on them? Because they arouse us. Because the weights basically pull on the nipple and it makes it feel like somebody is actually squeezing them and twisting them and turning them. Right? So, 
We also have the weights that have the little chain on them. So suppose you're up there riding and you got the nipple clamps on and he take and he tug and pull on the nipple clamp a little bit. Again, that stimulates the breast area, okay? And we got all different kinds. These, this one has a little charm that drops from it. This one here is a little more uh, risky looking. It got the little spikes hanging from it. Yeah, if my, my bond BDSM people. And then we have these other ones that actually vibrate. We, we got the vibrating ones too. Yes, yes, yes. So I just wanted to let you all know that we just stocked some really, really cute, cool, new nipple clamps. And if your breast area is your area, you like me, and your nipples are your thing, and that literally just gets you where you got to go. See, it, with my, I'm guaranteed to have an orgasm every time and a lot of people actually call it a nipple orgasm even though you're having an orgasm there's a such thing as a nipple or breast orgasm and when that happens you will notice that the breast starts to swell up you'll notice that they start to raise up yeah they actually start lifting up because they they swelling up with um with blood from the circulation yeah and they actually secrete pheromones so that mean, meaning when your partner is sucking them your body from your glands is actually secreting pheromones from your breast. Yes. So it basically turns your partner on because we know that that's what a pheromone does. Okay. All right. That is going to wrap it up for today. Um, lastly, before I get um, off this live, because I asked this question in my group and I said I wanted to make sure that I mentioned it. So I was in the group, we were talking about what happens as mothers when our children are violated, okay? And when I'm talking about violated, I mean in, I mean being touched or um, something inappropriate goes on with them. And I just want to give some wisdom to the mothers because we've been following this story about the family out of Florida who the young girl married the 50-something, 60-year-old man, whoever he is, who, however, old he, however old he is, He's a lot older than her, and he is supposed to be the godfather. Okay, we, we got the basics down. But her mom did a live, and her mom mentioned that she was the little girl was molested at two, and she shot the man that did it, and she basically went to prison for it. Okay, in our mind, we feel like, well, yeah, she should have shot him, and that's justified. But my thing is, I just want you to think a little further as a mother. As a mother, our job is to, to try to be here as best as we can to be able to protect our children, right? How can we protect them if we are in prison? How can we keep anybody else from violating them or being inappropriate with them and we are in prison? That is what I want you to ask yourself. How can you, if in other words, if you go out there and you go hurt this person, I'm not saying that the person shouldn't, um, be held accountable. I'm not saying that. But what I'm asking you is, as a mother, how can you protect your children from prison? And the, and, and the answer to that question is, you can't. So, what I need you to do is to be a little more proactive in the beginning. I don't like to place blame, but at the end of the day, as parents, mothers and fathers, it's our job to protect our children. Meaning that when we're protecting them, we have to know who they're around, who's coming in contact with them. And a, and a lot of the problem is a lot of times we are leaving them with people. A lot of times we want to be able to have a life and go here and go there. And sometimes it's just to go to work and we're having to leave them with people. But let me just say this. We have a responsibility to protect them. And that is just all I can say. It's our responsibility to protect them. So at any point, if our children get violated as a, as a parent, we got to turn around and we got to look at ourselves too. And we got to say, what did I not do? You know, because the thing is, this happens too often with children to where they are violated. And a lot of times it has to do with the environment. I told Spencer, I remember when we, we were young, because, you know, we got married very young. And my husband, he still liked friends and all of this kind of stuff. And I grew up in a household where my mama didn't let people live with us. She did not let people live with us. You couldn't sleep on our couch. First of all, you just couldn't sleep on her couch, period. Because she didn't even like people sleeping on her couch. So let's start there, okay? 
Not only that, I had a mother who just, she had this, you know, she, she didn't want people at our house, right? My husband, on the other hand, he grew up a little differently where people could stay over to their house. So when we got together, we had a different idea of the way a household runs. Meaning that I felt like, you know, you don't need to have company over when, when your company leave. They don't need to stay over and sleep on the couch. This ain't the hotel motel to where people just coming over, dropping in and staying, right? A lot of times what happens is we open our doors up and allow predators to become a part of our life in our, in our, uh, in our home space. Meaning we letting the uncle come stay. We letting the cousin come stay. We letting the brother friend come stay. We letting this person come stay. All these people are able to stay tonight. And at this point, you got this child who is vulnerable, who, who just basically, you know, uh, the child don't have control of the environment, right? So what I'm trying to get you to understand as parents is we have an obligation to make sure that we're protecting our children at all times. And when I say at all times, at all times, if we do have to leave and go to work, sometimes we have to work jobs that, uh, that, that work around the school schedule, you know? Or if they don't work around the school schedule, that means we can't go work that job. Or we have to have people that are trusted like their grandparents. And we got to know how their grandparents are running their household. Because sometimes, even leaving children with the grandparents, you got the great uncle and the cousin and all these other people over there too. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, we can't protect them from jail. Meaning we can't go out there and do something crazy and get ourselves in trouble and go to jail and then you can't protect them. And then you have to be mindful of who you leaving them with. Okay. A lot of times when you have children, your life stops. It was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of places that I wanted to go that I just couldn't go or didn't go to because I didn't want to have, I didn't want people watching my children. I didn't want to leave them with people. So when they got older and they was able to watch themselves, I started doing more and going out more and, and doing more of the things that I wanted to do when they got older. But when they young, no. And then another thing is I'll let go and stay at people's house. Go and stay at your sister house. Go and stay at this person's house. No. Keep them with you. Keep them close to you. Because it, it happens far too often. Okay? So I just wanted to give you that wisdom. And I know a lot of people don't like to have these type of conversations, and that's fine. But my job is to get you to think beyond that point of after it happens. How about we as parents try to prevent these type of things from happening, okay? You all be blessed. You all enjoy the rest of your day. If you like this hat, make sure you go and check out Trina Tings. Trina Tings. That's where this hat came from. I have like maybe eight colors, eight different colors. I think I got every color that she got. And I'm not even a hair person, but guess what? This fall, ain't she rocking her braids and ain't she rocking her hats, okay? You all be blessed. Enjoy your day. Come see me here at the PPG store. If you like anything you saw, make sure you check out the website below. Really? Stand y'all back. Good. All right.